Welcome back to another video everyone, it's Citizen X. Today I thought I'd show you how I run my Minecraft server that supports up to 20 players from my trig key mini PC. No fancy server, no fancy hardware, just a mini PC um, and a dream basically. Uh, this is just going to be a short video since it's just an overview but if you'd like a full tutorial on how to get this running, how to do this yourself, let me know below. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. So I have it set up here running on a virtual machine in Proxmox. Proxmox is running on the mini PC. I picked a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine to run the server on as some of the software I'm using works best on Windows. Windows is what I'm most familiar with so it seemed like the right decision. So I'll just open up my RDP program here and if we hop on to the Windows 10 VM I'll be able to show you around a little. I've kept it extremely simple as you can see here I've only got two icons that really matter on the desktop here. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the server didn't really take a lot to maintain. I wanted to keep it as bare bones as possible, especially considering my requirements. I, I don't need to do much on it. Um, so the first thing to say is that I didn't want to forward any ports on this server. So I used a service called playit.gg. Now playit.gg acts as a proxy between me and the players joining my server um, so that my network and their network or my network and their PCs never have to communicate directly. My player's client needs to send their request to play it and play it forwards them to me and then my server sends the responses to those requests to play it and play it forwards it on to my users. And so far it's been a really great system, I haven't had any issues with it at all and it takes just seconds to set up, it really does. And you can see from their diagram here, you know there's no connection ever between me and my players. Everything goes from me to play it to the player and from the player to play it to me. So it's a real simple process. And then the second thing I use to actually get the server up and running is Fork. Now, Fork is essentially a one-stop shop for Minecraft server creation and management. It allows me to run a vanilla server, a paper server, any server you could think of. It lets you install mods so that Java and Bedrock players can play together. That was one of my requirements, so that's one of the reasons I'm using this. It allows you to run a vanilla server, a paper server, install mods, uh, allow Java and Bedrock players to play together. It lets you install plugins so that you can tweak gameplay and manage the server. Server. It's really been a great solution so far and again, it's free. So let's take a little tour of the server here You can see once it's up and running you get your server list down the side I'll probably blur some of this out because it's private information information that some people wouldn't necessarily want me to just put out there So you get your server list down the side I've only got one there at the moment But if it was if you wanted multiple you can absolutely have multiple you get a nice little dashboard at the top, lets you know what's the load on your CPU right now, how much RAM is the server using, what's the disk space, or what's the, the disk utilization. Now, I don't think this is working correctly for me because I don't think it's using 0% of the RAM. It's it's running and there are people in there right now, so it's uh, something going on there, but I can get the actual information from Proxmox anyway. So if I hop back to Proxmox here, you can see it's using about 6% of the four CPU cores I've allocated it. Um, so doesn't really matter. You get an, a big box in the middle of all the info of what's going on in your server and you can type commands here down the bottom. So if I wanted to um, say something to everyone in the server, I can say slash say hello. And then that get that message gets put out there to everyone in the server. They can reply. So if I'm getting reports of people that are breaking the rules or doing this or that, I can put a warning out. I can tell people that the server's going to go down for maintenance. I can do absolutely anything I want. You can use the slash tell command to talk to players directly uh, if you just want to send a message to one person. You get a players list here. Again, this is going to be blanked out because it's some private information. And you get a ban list here. Now, I've not had to ban anyone yet. Everything's been pretty good. You can see it's really fully featured and uh, if we go into the settings here instead of having to, this is one of the beautiful things about Fork, so instead of having to manage your server through the properties file, editing it in VS Code or Notepad or whatever, it's all just toggles. So game mode is survival, can change that to whatever I like here. You can see we've got 20 player slots, the port the server's running on, we can change the difficulty, uh, the RAM that's allocated to the server so you can you can change that on the fly. You can enable all these different things, force the server to use a whitelist, um, change the render distance, the viewing distance. You can really, it's just nice having everything in, <laughs> in, in a nice dashboard and you don't have to mess around with commands and this, that and the other. 
Uh, now you can create a new world if you want to, you can import a world, so if you've been on a different server before, you can download a file, point this to uh, your world file, and away you go, the server will pick up on your old server. That's what I did, so this server, the world that we're on at the moment, was originally an Atenos server, an Atenos, however people say it. I downloaded the world, world file, got it up and running on this. Now this button down here, the bottom one, is one of the most interesting ones. This is where you get all your plugins. Now I'm not going to be able to show you at the moment because, well, my server's running. But you can search for plugins and you can see here there's fast async world edit, there's world guard, extra fa uh, flags, um, quest world. So you can really start fine tuning, making your server a bit more personal, doing whatever you like. Um, and it's really as simple as that. Uh, as you can see, if I hop back to Proxmox here, it's running on a Windows 10 VM, so Windows 10 can be a bit RAM hungry anyway. Um, but it's been allocated 5 gigs of RAM and it's only really using about 4 gigs. Um, and it's got 4 CPU cores of my AMD 5700U processor. Not taxing it at all. I'll tell you, there's 5 people on the server at the moment and we're using between 5 and 7% of the CPU. So it's really efficient. It works really well. This tricky PC is really paying for itself. It's really good. It's fantastic. And you can see here, I've not just got this one Minecraft server running. I've got a Jellyfin server running. I've got a Bookstack server running for documentation. It's fantastic. So I suppose the only thing to do now is hop on and show you that you can connect with Java, show you that you connect to the same server with Bedrock. It's a real seamless process. So let's hop into it. And there we go, we're in the server. You can see there's a nice big castle being built here. Let's uh, time set day so you can see it in all its glory. Set the weather to clear. Got to show it off, haven't you? If you're going to have a Minecraft server, you got to show it off. So let's exit out of this and we will hop back on in Java. And here we are in Java. Let's go back over and have a look at the castle again. See the world's just spawning in here. It's really important to me to have this functionality of joining on Java and joining on Bedrock because some things are just nice to do in Java, but when you really want to have a nice visual experience, you can't beat the ray tracing of Bedrock. So there it is. Minecraft, a Minecraft server running on the TrigKey S5. Um, again, I wanted to make this video because, well, it's interesting, isn't it? I'm, I've got this TrigKey S5, I'm using it as a home lab, I'm messing around with Minecraft servers, Jellyfin servers, Bookstack servers. I even set up a couple of Windows virtual machines that I turn on whenever I need to, created a domain, started messing around. It's just this whole world of home lab. It's really interesting um, and I wanted to show it off to people. If you want a tutorial on how to do this, make sure you leave a comment below. Um, I'm more than happy to make a tutorial on showing how I got this up and running and how you can do it yourself. But for now, that's it. Check out my other tricky S5 videos if you've not seen them already. I've got a whole series of setting it up, unboxing it, reviewing it, uh, installing Jellyfin, etc, etc. So if you've not seen my other um, videos on this little home lab PC, do check them out and thanks for watching.